What's up guys, this is Tim with Truth Church. Just want to welcome you tonight. I know we have a uh, great uh, Thanksgiving holiday. I'm sorry, I gotta put my headphones on here. I don't know about you guys, but our family had a great Thanksgiving holiday and I just want to encourage you, do not leave that place of Thanksgiving. What's up JJ? want to welcome everybody to our live church tonight. Um, let me see if I can add anybody on here. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But Okay, well, until then, um, here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, we had an awesome Thanksgiving. We had all of our family come in. Also have a father-in-law coming in tomorrow from uh, Montreal, Canada, where um, I've been on church before at, uh, at his house. So uh, my father-in-law is coming in, have my sister-in-law in, have my parents in. So uh, everybody had to come see new baby and celebrate Thanksgiving. Just wanted to start off uh, church tonight with a little bit of prayer, and then we'll go into discussion and and we'll go into everything else that God has for us. So God, we thank you that tonight your word stands so much stronger than even our ideas or our thoughts. Father, that your presence is stronger than our past, that wherever, God, you want us to be, we will go there. And Father, we praise we praise you for the life that you've given us, the breath in our lungs, and the, the uh, encouragement and the wisdom from your word. So God, we thank you that tonight is the night of salvation, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but right now, God, we have another chance to see your kingdom. Thank you so much. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. I just wanted to share a little bit tonight. Sorry, I'm looking up the scripture here um, to be a little bit more exact on my wife's phone. Um, God put on my heart to look up um, a a whole chapter today. I'm just going to touch on a few different things in that chapter. But uh, the chapter is Matthew 28. What What I find so common in uh, preaching these days is we, we leave out the word. Um, we leave out the main um, entree, if you will, of the meal, when in fact God gave us his word so that we could share it with one another. And that's what Truth Church is about, sharing the truth of God wherever we go and not, um, not just, not just um, expecting for people to do the right thing around us, but speaking life from God's word. And we see the kingdom come. We see his presence come and miracles and and healing wherever we go. So I'm going to flip over to Matthew 28. Give me a second to find it. Hope your guys' this week has been well. I know I talked about my Thanksgiving, but I hope your guys' this was great. Um, here's Matthew 28. It's it's uh, The title of it is The Resurrection. It says, After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, came um, to the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, came right up where they're standing. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. It says, flashes of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't move. I'm so used to reading this in a different translation. Sorry, this is what got pulled up. But you get the gist of the story is is two ladies run because they they they've been given uh, the word that that something is happening at this tomb. They just buried Jesus. Jesus was crucified, died for the sins of the world. But they've been given word that Jesus was alive and something was happening. Right, so they they knew. So they ran to the tomb. Right, the guards of the tomb were so scared. They couldn't move. The angel spoke to the woman. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was risen, just as he said. Come and look where he was placed, right? Now get on your way quickly and tell the disciples, he's risen from the dead. He's going on ahead of you. You will see him in Galilee. And that was the message. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. How many times has someone come to you and shared a message of life, a message, the good news. And you look at them and you go, you know what? That's cool. I've heard that. 
you know, maybe not verbally, but like in your heart, you're like, man, I, I, I know there's a lot of, yeah, sorry. My wife's asking, she can take her phone back. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of times where people come up and they share, share something, man, I was out, I was out on my way and, uh, and this happened to me and this happened to me and, you know, this guy got saved and, you know, this homeless guy, he was standing there and I just felt compassion to give him everything that I had, every, every, um, every piece of food that I had in my car, every drink, all the money I had. And we were trying to tell the story and people were like, "Mm," they kind of check out. Well, this is what happened is Mary and, and, um, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went back. They went to go tell everybody and, and not everybody was stoked. But what was so cool was they saw it with their own eyes. And what Jesus has asked from us is, I need you to tell about me, but I need you to not just tell about me, but I need you to experience me. And, and that's what we want to be doing as a church is we want to be experiencing Jesus on a whole nother level where yes, we're going back and we're telling everybody whatever God tells us to say, we say it, but letting God inhabit our bodies, letting the presence of God be at the forefront of our bodies, at the forefront of our temples. And it says that in scripture that be holy as Jesus is holy. And one thing that we really struggle with in life is, yes, we've died from our old way, but, and we were resurrected at that time that we, we invited Christ in our heart of the Holy Spirit. But there was a moment you know, in, in time where we just go, man, I'm so tired. Well, scripture says, do not grow weary in doing good. And he said that because he knew that, yes, we would be resurrected from our sin, just like Jesus said we would. He said, you know, you're going to do greater things than I even did. But he said, the same power that lives in me, that resurrected me from the grave, also lives in you. And so he's saying, it lives in you, but do not grow weary in doing good. Don't look around and and be thrown off by how the world is living, but live a righteous life full of the Holy Spirit and and take your eyes off the things of the world. It says, you know, there's a song that says, and the things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of your glory. And, And that's what our focus is as a church. It's to let our eyes and our vision not be what we need to do in life. We already know what to do. Our responsibility, our hope in Christ is that we can share the good news in whatever we do. That's our purpose is to share good news, not bad news. Good news, not bad news. Good news, good news all day long. Yes, it's okay to be, you know, to be realistic and talk about struggles and temptations and weaknesses. Yeah, but God has given us the peace and he's given us the joy and he's given us all these fruits of his Holy Spirit to share the good news. Now, sometimes we have a, we have a hard time between our flesh and the new resurrected body. And that's understandable. But when we put our eyes on anything other than Christ, we start being more and more like ourselves. And a lot of us say, man, you know, I got to find myself. I got to find myself. I got to find myself. Okay, I found myself. This is who I am. Don't try to correct me. This is who I am. And what God is saying to us is, listen, it's time that we stop focusing on self and we start focusing on the Savior. The Holy Spirit has given us His Spirit and His Spirit raised Christ from the grave. Jesus was dead. And a lot of us, we don't even believe that that He can help us in times of temptation. But He already did that for Jesus, so why would He not do that for you? He already resurrected Jesus. The Father did. Why would He not also resurrect you? And, And a lot of us are very insecure about this faith walk that we've decided to take. You know, before we knew everything that was going to happen. Hey, in two years, I'm going to have a Lamborghini. In two years, I'm going to do this. In two years, I'm going to do this. In five years, in 10 years, I'm going to have this wife. I'm going to have this husband. I'm going to have this job. I'm going to have this kind of income. I'm going to have this kind of inheritance, right? But God says to us, when we invite him in this in our hearts, now it's time you follow me. Not follow what your ancestors did or what you want to do, but what Jesus said, right? So 
Let's go back to resurrection. In Matthew 28, there's two women totally excited about Jesus being resurrected from the dead. They're telling everybody. And in, in, in today's age, it's almost like, hey, this guy, he got saved. This guy, he had a miracle. This guy, like I was mentioning earlier. And, and we get discouraged by people's reactions. And, that, and, and like... Our insecurity, yes, is a thing. We will have times of insecurity and doubt. But God says, you know, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. That's why, that's why Jesus, when, when he went um, to the Garden of Gethsemane before he was going to be crucified, before he was going to give his life for the forgiveness of the world, he, he stopped and he, and he said, okay, I can't worry. And he prayed and he talked with the Father. That's where Jesus is wanting us to do. He's wanting us to come back to him where even before we go out and we share the good news, we, we, give, you know, we give life through miracles, healing, or, this, or, or the gospel, that, that we're giving love to him. And that's what, that's, what our, that's what our purpose is in life, is to give love to him. It's to, it's to share the good news, but the good news only comes if you are receiving it first. Jesus came as a man so that we can know what to do next. How do we, what, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And we get so worried and we get so full of our, our ideas and our mind and we let our brains rule our life. And we, we see somebody say, well, what did you do in this situation? And we take their lead and God's like, no, 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 like, I have given you a resurrected spirit to resurrect you from every old way of thinking, every old way of acting, right? The Father has given us His Son in spirit form. The Son does not have to be in the Middle East and us here. The Son doesn't have to be in this city. We have to go find Him. The Son is inside of you if you welcome Him and invite Him. And, and the one thing that the one thing that keeps coming back to mind, and I wish Tony was on here because I love, I, Tony has a great perspective on this, but the one thing that comes back to mind is, it's not like our life is going to be perfect, but God asks us to be holy as He is holy. What does that mean? It means to be set apart. It says in Scripture, do not think as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their minds. What does that mean? It means that their minds are constantly spinning. It means that they're constantly going in circles. They're, they feel like they're going insane because they're trying to create new things. They're trying to do new things. They're trying to be the best person that they are and they never live up to, you know, that Olympic body that they want, you know, or even if they get there, they don't, they don't have compassion or joy and, you know, maybe their love life is off or there's always something that's lacking and that's why Jesus said, do not think as the world thinks. Don't be discouraged. You know, don't grow weary in doing good. Be loved and love everyone else, right? So, you know, Tony uh, is uh, the other pastor here at Truth, and I wanted to um, just kind of share a couple things that he's texting because usually there's that option to bring him on, but I'm just going to be sharing some things that he texts as well. So if you see him say something, I might touch on what he's saying just so we can both be included, right? Tony, Pastor Tony just said something. He said, the way that seems right to a man leads to death, but the way that seems wrong to man leads to life. So there's times where we're like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is not what I'm used to, right? But God's like, no, 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 what seems wrong to you is right to me. When God asks you to do something outside of your mind, outside of your, outside of your financial status, outside of your, outside of your pride, if he asks you to go up and, and, and compliment someone and you're like, nah, he's, he's going to think that I, you know, this is weird. It's awkward. You know, like what God's trying to do is bring humility to you. And what Jesus always did was he reminded people that the father existed. He did whatever he could for people to be resurrected. And although Jesus had not been fully resurrected in terms of from the dead, you know, from the grave, he was letting people everywhere that he walked be resurrected just by being in his presence and just stop by saying what the Father said. I'm going to take another drink real uh, quick. It's dry here. He 
You know, I was thinking earlier, my mind started going into that confusion and, and, and just twirling and thinking, you know, what's going to happen in 2020? And, and honestly, like, I'm not a, I'm not a person that, that lives too far ahead, but I do think far ahead. So like when I used to walk in the prophetic every single day, and that was my responsibility and that was my, my purpose at that moment, um, you know, it was like, I constantly had to be ready to give a prophetic word. And, and I did that for about um, seven years on the road. And, and it was a little bit tiring at moments because I felt like I always had to have something for someone. But I want to tell you something from, from being in ministry, you know, since, I, since the age of 13, you know, I'm 28 now. So I've been in ministry a long time. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of people, you know, have the right heart, but not say the right thing. And some people, you know, say the right thing and they have the wrong heart. So I want to bring it back to a a conversation I had earlier. I was talking about how, you know, God is calling us to a place of holiness, to a place to be set apart. And, and, and while I was talking to my friend about this, you know, we were talking about how it's, it's weird that, you know, you want to do the right thing, but you do the wrong thing and you want to do, you, you know, sometimes you want to do the wrong thing and then God gives you the power to do the right thing. And it's, it's like this constant, um, struggle in our life between our flesh and the resurrected spirit of God. And and we were talking and, and he said, you know, my friend Tim said, I, I keep going back to the beginning of the word. And the word at the beginning said in Genesis, you know, it said for us to love. You know, God is God loved Adam and God loved the world. So he gave Adam life. He gave Eve life. And then he created the garden. He created the animals. He created everything that exists in front of our eyes. And I believe that's what God's trying to get us to. It says in scripture that, you know, you might have all, you might speak in tongues or, or you might, you know, raise people from the dead or cast out demons. But if you have love, you have nothing. And that's what we believe as a, as a, um, community that if we love not try to be perfect and not try to be something that we can't attain and Jesus was the perfect sacrifice he was the perfect person don't try to be perfect but first of all love love God love your neighbor and then you know be holy as God is holy what does that mean being set apart I'm not going to do everything that I see everybody else doing you know I'm not going to I'm not going to talk the way everyone else talks. I'm not, I'm, you know, if somebody's talking negative about this person and, and that person, you know, always talks negative about people, like it's probably a good idea not to join in on that. You know, you may not have to say anything, but just say, Hey man, I, I came to hang out and this is kind of turning like a sour conversation and you know, I need to go or, or Hey man, like let's keep loving people. It's, it's scripture says, love your enemies, you know, and, and, and don't curse them, you know? So I've had a couple situations lately where God's been like, hey man, that dude that just talked to you, not a good guy. Obviously, everything he's saying is bad, but guess what? Do not curse him. Do not think about the wrong that you wish on him that, you know, he would just be eliminated because he's such a bad person. But no, love your enemies. Love your enemies as yourself. You know, God's like, Bringing us to a place where we're saying, God, I'm willing to learn from you about what it is to be resurrected, about what it is to be holy. As Tony, Pastor Tony said, you know, we need to speak life into dry bones. We need to realize that there's people around us that are not seeking the presence of God. And that's where they're at. And we need to still love them where they're at and not speak death over them. You know, in scripture, it also says this. It says there's power in your tongue. And it says, you can speak life, you can speak death, and those who love to speak will eat its fruits. So what God is asking us in 2019 is the same thing he's been asking since he left this earth. Let go of yourself. It's like we want a power higher than us to give us the instruction, but at the at the moment we don't hear them, or the moment that we don't we don't feel God, or or, or the moment that 
we feel lonely. We, we, we go back into ourselves, into our old life. And I believe this year God is asking us to lay down our life. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just going to church, right? I'm not talking about just, you know, giving gifts on Christmas or, or showing up to Thanksgiving, even though, you know, you didn't really have the money for it. I know those are great things, right? But I'm talking about whatever you have done in the past, right? which could be yesterday, letting go of that, letting go of the way that you think, whether if it's negative, if it's not like the Father, letting go of it, right? God, whatever it is, whatever God is talking to you about, this is the year of resurrection. This is a year where we need to be resurrected. And this is, and we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. God is not saying, I'm coming, to, I'm coming right now. I'm coming right now. I'm coming the next second. Like, and if he did, then yes, it would be time right now. But like, we have time for God to change us and we need to allow him to do that. We can't let time, you know, dictate our life. Like, oh man, I got plenty of time. No, but I'm saying, don't rush yourself to perfection and then try to rush everybody else to be perfect. Let's encourage one another to be holy, but let's let God bring his holiness to us first. And it, and hey, in scripture says, um, it says this very, very clearly. It says, he began a good work in you at salvation and he will finish it until completion. So we have to believe that the Holy Spirit will do the work. But our job is to just take our hands, take our hands off of our sin. Stop trying to heal ourselves. But yes, allowing God's holiness to reign and to be stronger than our own flesh. Now, some of us might say, you know, I've, I've been letting God have control of my life, you know, for 25 years. I've been surrendered to him. I get that. And you might say, you know, I've led 2,500 people to God. Okay, cool. But how are you towards your family? How are you towards yourself? Do you love your family? Do you forgive your family? Do you love yourself? Do you forgive yourself? There's a lot of people in this world that do so many good things, right? Before man, you know, Scripture says, don't let your right hand see what your left hand is doing, right? It's saying like, don't be so focused on on doing good things. Be more focused on the Father's love. And, and, And I believe that this year, by the end of this year, if we can really do better, I'm not talking about perfection again. I'm talking about do better at seeing God's holiness and that he desires for us to be holy with him and desires for us to be more like him. If we can allow him to come into our hearts and to change us this year, I believe 2020 can be a year where we can celebrate and we can, you know, give thanks and we can we can throw parties for God and we can see all of the you know, the victory that God had through us being obedient to his word, being obedient to his spirit, whatever his spirit is saying, we say, whatever his spirit is doing, we do. And, and one thing God told, uh, talked to me earlier about was if my spirit is holy and my spirit is life inside of you, if there's anything you're putting in your body, whether you're consuming it, um, you know, eating it, um, drinking it, whatever it is, if it's not life, why are you putting it in your body? Why are you feeding my spirit that's life something that is bringing death? If you know if there's if there's movies or if there's people or if there's if there's something that's that's feeding you and 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 your flesh is is living greater than the spirit. You know, I believe God is asking us to let go of our flesh, to let go of those things that are just extremely extremely temporary. And saying, God, you are more powerful than my sin. God, I know I want, I know I struggle with this alcoholism, drugs, you know, I I struggle with, um, you know, I was going to say, sorry, I got lit. 
I struggle with this, I struggle with that, you know. But God, I'm willing to let you have that so that I can be more like you, so that when I arrive in heaven, I'm not going to be held back by my body or my cravings. I'm going to I'm going to crave you from now on. You know, one thing I've been working on is not finding, you know, going from one addiction to the next and this addiction to the next and and trying to supplement everything, but what I've been trying to do is if I if I my flesh wants me to do this so bad, I've been learning to do the opposite. And what I, like if I, if I want to eat because I'm bored and I'm tired, I've been at home all day, like I don't know what else to do. God's like go to the gym. And it's like, it's kind of hard with babies to go to the gym. So it's not going to be easy doing the opposite of what you've always done, right? But the more you do what God has for you, the more you follow his word and his leading, that's how you will see his holiness come alive in you. And if you got to call someone say, hey man, I feel like I... I feel like I need to live a different life. Will you be here? Will you help me? Will you encourage me? You know, do that. If if God doesn't tell you to do that, then don't go call everybody and, and get, you know, accountability partners all over the world because some people may not want to bring life to you. They may just want you to do the right thing and they might push that perfection on you. So I want to I want to bring us back. God is saying just be holy and whatever it takes for you to be holy, choose holiness, choose him, choose his his resurrection power. It's already inside of you. You don't have to go look for it. And if you haven't invited it in your heart, all you got to do is say, Jesus, I invite you to live in my heart. I invite you to be my guide. I invite you to be my savior. I invite you to be stronger than my body and my flesh and my mind. I, inv- I want to live eternity with you. And I welcome you, and you are welcome whenever you want to speak to me, to help me, to correct me, to discipline me, because it's not me, but it's you, God, that is giving me life. It's not me that's causing myself to breathe, but God, it's your breath inside of me. So if you have not prayed a prayer like that, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to do the right thing, because the right thing is inviting a spirit that God gave his life, his own son for, for you to have inside of your body. Giving that spirit reign over your life will change your life for eternity. You'll see him in everything you do. You may have taken out the trash before and thought about, well, look at all this plastic. I can't believe it. You might think that way. And the next time, after you invite Jesus in your heart, you might think, wow, look at the sunset. You know, God changes your mind, He changes your heart, He changes your action, He changes your life. And, and I believe that's the, you know, that's the pressure that we have um, a lot from ourselves is to appreciate life. But we're trying to do it many, many times without God being the center of our, of our thoughts, God being the center of our heart, God being the center of our marriage or, or, or of, our, um, of our home. So in, um, this year... Let's let God be the center of our th- of our everything. Let's let him be the center of our vision, our dreams, our passions. Let's let his holiness be full um, and right in front of us. Let our vision be his holiness and let us see him clearly and desire that he would be what we lean on. Not lean on ourselves and not lean on our own understanding, but lean on the one that God that wakes you up in the morning, the one that helped you be birthed by your mother, you know, the one that saved you from that car accident a couple years ago. Whatever Jesus has done for you, let's let let's ponder on those things, give thanks, but let us go to a greater realm and see him and his purity and his holiness for your life. And and this year, let's be a resurrected church. And let's let him show us who he is in his fullness and his glory. So I want to pray and then we're going to head out here. I got um, mama making beef stew and try to take care of two babies. So I'm going to head out. But um, next week we're going to have Pastor Tony back on. I'm super excited to hear his um, his sermon and, uh, and hear some 
a message from God. So I just want to pray that um, God would give you his favor, that wherever you walk, that you would not struggle to succeed, but you would be satisfied in whatever God has for your life. He is greater than yesterday. He's greater than two minutes ago. He's greater than anything you've ever seen. So allow him to continually be over your life and allow him to communicate with you on a regular basis and give you everything that you need as you were created for life. You were created for this world. It's not something you need to escape. It's something that you need to appreciate. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, guys. I I really, really appreciate everyone that comes on here. Let's invite people to come on here. If they need to hear a a message that is giving life and they haven't heard one in a while, let's let's bring people on. We're not trying to build um, numbers. We're trying to bring souls into the kingdom of God and have a great place for us to rule and to reign on earth, but also in heaven. So thank you guys. And uh, from from me to you, God loves you and I love you. Have a great week. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you.